tutorial, we'll be creating a form with validation. If I click Submit, you can see the validation, and you can see the uh, stores updating as I type in. So and you can see the validation going away. I'm just going to type in something really quick. Cups, two, and then we'll add an ingredient, and then we'll say beans, and we'll say ounces just for fun. Three, we'll click Submit. You can see the recipe was saved. If I go to my data, I go to recipes, you can see the recipe is saved right here. So that's the form that we'll be building. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next section. All right, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new terminal. I'm going to do n and clear. And I'm going to install swap form libs and yup. Yup is used for form validation, and Swap Form Libs is a wrapper for it. Um, next, I'm going to go into Source, and we're going to clean up our index page, our home page, because we don't need some of this. So we're going to get rid of the server stuff that we were doing for SSR. We're going to get rid of that export, or that prop, I should say. And we'll get rid of the display. Let's go ahead and save that, and that's looking good. Next, we'll add some uh, Bootstrap CDN links. And I do have all these links in the uh, post that I'll put in the description, so don't worry about that. So I'll put that in, and that'll give the page some style. You can see the Bootstrap style right there. Next, we'll um, go to our Add Recipe page and start working on the form. So what I'm going to do is replace this import with that. And I'm also going to add an alert right here. So capital A for alert. Let's go to that page so we can see it. All right. So not much has gone on here. So we imported GUP and the create form that we'll use to create the form. OK, cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy in the schema. And that's what's used to validate. And it basically gives us the shape of the form object. So our form will have a title right now and a description. And then we're going to create the form. And that's just done with this. Now there's a few things to note. This form and errors are actually stores. And these two are callbacks, handle change and handle submit. And handle submit is a callback for or a function that runs when you submit the form. And basically it calls this function right here. And these initial values are what the title and description will be initially set to. So now that we have that, we can uh, create our form. So let's do that. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna paste it under here. I'll click Submit. Let me make this a little bit smaller. And let me refresh the page, hopefully that appears. If not, so whenever, yeah, whenever it's doing this, I usually just, yeah, there's something weird going on. So I just restart the server. So that's what I'm doing right now. And hopefully that works. There we go. So that's the form. And yeah, so let's go over this HTML. So this is just a standard Swell input. We're hooking up to the on change event, so that'll call this handle change function. We're binding to the form.title. This is just this just this will just set some CSS and it's just a prop. And what you'll see is that if I do this, and this will make it make a little more sense. So we'll do an H2 here and we'll say form. And then we'll do a pre-tag. And then this is pretty cool. This is a pretty cool trick. We'll do dollar sign form because it's a store, null, and two. And that'll get show us what the form looks like or the form object. And we can do the same thing for errors as well. And then that error logic will make sense. And you can see this is what errors look like right here. So if I do that, you can see that's what that looks like. So that's why that logic works. So if the length is greater than zero, we know for the errors that we know there's an error here. And that's how this is working too. So we're just using that standard uh, bootstrap stuff to 
expound on the errors. Okay, so now that we have that working, we're ready to move on to add the list of ingredients. So let's do that. So I'm going to go up here and go to the form schema and add the list of ingredients. And you can see we must have between one to ten ingredients, and each ingredient will have a name, a unit, and an amount. And now that we have that, we need to update our initial values because they have changed. So that's pretty easy. So let's go here and paste that in. So that'll be our initial value. And then we're going to add a quick row in between the button, the submit button, and our description for adding ingredients. So that's what that is. That's our add ingredient button. And then we're going to loop through all the ingredients in our form and add them in. So when I paste this in, it will do that. And I'm gonna remove this for right now. We'll add this back a little later. But you can see the trash can's off a little bit. We'll fix that. But this just basically uses the same stuff. And I'll have a link for all of this. But the big thing to note is this name. The name has to match. So I didn't mention that before, but basically this name description has to match this description. So this is very important that you structure this right. Ingredients and then square brackets with the ingredient dot name. And this is just a, the ID doesn't matter, but I just did this so it would be unique um, right here. So that's basically that. And now that we have that, let's go ahead and style up our um, trash can. So I'm going to put a style tag at the bottom right here. And that will style up the trash can, push it down, and color it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the add ingredient function. And what that will do is it will allow us to add an ingredient to the list of ingredients. So let's do that. And you can see we're just adding an ingredient to the list and we're adding a, an errors ingredient to the list as well. And we're just setting them all to blank. This is just a TypeScript error. Don't worry about that error that we're getting there. So if I go to the add ingredient button, you can treat this just like a regular button. And we can call that. And now what should happen is we get an ingredient, but we can't click on this. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. Quick. And what we'll do is we will add the remove ingredient function. And that will take in the index that we're removing. And basically it'll filter that index out. So it'll remove that from the errors and from the form. So to call that, we'll go into our I. And this is why we made the I a cursor. So we'll do an on click. And then we'll do a callback. We'll say remove ingredient. And we just need to pass it the index, which is in our case i. And that's coming from this each. If we go up here, you can see this i is the actual index of the loop. So now if I save that and I go here, I should be able to delete them. So that's looking really good. The next thing we need to do is we need to check and see if there's zero ingredients. So if I do this, and I do, this is a test, and I know that's not spelled right. Just roll with me and I click Submit. You can see we have this ingredients here. Ingredients field must have at least one item. So we, I'm going to display an alert, uh, a bootstrap alert, just letting people know if they need to add more than one item. So we'll go, we'll add that right below here. And we're just making sure that it's a string and it doesn't include this object because there's a weird error with this uh, library. So now if I remove the ingredient and I do test and I do this and I click submit, you can see we now have this error and showing like it's supposed to, but if I click add, it goes away. So that's really good. And you can also see that object thing right here. So that's what we're checking. So it's giving us a weird error thing. I probably should file a bug with that library, but no big deal. So we're doing really good. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to save to Firebase. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, 
So what we'll do is we'll create a new file and we're going to call this file db and this is where we'll save all of our files. So it'll be db.ts and yeah so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to export all these types and these types um, are basically like interfaces. The big important thing to note is that this type right here, this timestamp is what Firebase will um, render to us. Now we want to send to Firebase a field value and the reason is is that that's how we'll send a server time field value which means that Firebase will actually set the timestamp for us and it won't be set by the client. So that's why we're doing that. So I'm going to import um, some things to make that work. And we're getting this error because it's saying that this could be imported as a type and we're going to fix that in a second because we're also going to use it not as just as a type but also as a value. So the next thing as you can see we've got our types right here. Now one thing to note and I forgot to say this is that we're saving it with a user ID and the reason is is that we're going to write Firebase rules to um, to do that. So when I go here we're basically taking in a recipe form which does not have a user ID. We're merging the user ID in and we're also merging the created at and updated at in. And you can see we're using this server timestamp which returns a field and then we're just adding it just like a normal recipe. And we're also marking this as an async uh, function. So that's what's going on there. So now that we have that working, let's go here and let's mark this as async because we know we're going to need an async function. And let's go ahead and say create recipe. And what I forgot to do is a try and a catch. Now I know that imported it wrong. I need to change that settings. But we'll fix that in a second. And let me just, instead of uh, having you watch me type this in, let me just paste this in real quick. And you can see uh, we're passing in the values, which will be the form values and the user ID. And let's go ahead and fix that error that we're going to get. So just two dots instead of the dot SRC. And that should work. So and not, notice also we're wrapping everything in a try catch. So if we do get an error, uh, we should catch it. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out real quick. So I'm going to say rice and beans. This is a test for rice and beans. And we'll say rice. And we'll do two cups. And we'll add another ingredient. And then we'll say beans. And we'll say two cups this time for real. So it looks good. We're not getting any errors. So let's go ahead and submit this. And the recipe was saved. So that's really good. So I bet if we go to Firebase and I'll go to my console. Sorry, I should have had this tab open. No big deal. We'll go to Firestore and we'll go to Recipes. You can see um, and see this is our recipe right here and notice we have the user ID which is really great because what we can do later on is go into rules and write rules for the user ID so right now for recipes we're allowing anyone to read and allowing anyone to create but we don't have any rules for update which we'll need later on so yeah so that is how you would build a uh, a res that's how you would use Swelt Form Libs, Swelt Kit, and Swelt Strap and Firebase to save a form, uh, save some form data. I will uh, catch you all in the next video. And uh, if you have it, if you ever want to give a talk on Swelt, please let me know. I know I keep saying that. And uh, if you're willing to take part in a computer science survey for an open source project I'm thinking about starting, please let me know that as well. And I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you soon.